Howdy YouTube and welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So the wait is finally over and I've got a DV-1 in my hands. The brand new Devilbus DV-1. I've been wondering for a long time what Devilbus' next installation was going to be, how it was going to perform, how it was going to look, and we're going to go through all those details plus more in this in-depth review. So as you can see there, you get a pretty special looking box. Now this is the digital version. At this point from the distributor that I got it from, they only have the digital version. Non-digital will be in stock later on. As you can see there, this is the air adjustment valve down the bottom there. So slightly different than previous models. Here's a good look at the air cap. And it's slightly different, but very similar to their older air caps from their GTI Pros. The design of the gun itself has been overhauled a little bit while it is still very familiar. You know that you've got a Devilbus in your hands. Um, it, it doesn't feel like a foreign object in your hand. If you're a Devilbus sprayer and you go and get one of these, it doesn't feel unlike a normal Devilbus. It still fits nice in the hand. It's got a nice feel to it. Um, whether or not you like the design, that's going to be entirely up to you. Personally, I think it's going to grow on me, but um, I, I personally prefer the look of the old GTI Pro lights. I'm, I'm already at the point where I'm looking forward to them doing some limited edition runs because, yeah, I, I, I do miss the uh, Devilbus stamped into the handle of the GTI Pros and Pro Lights and even the original GTIs. I, I do actually uh, prefer to have that Devilbus stamped into the handle. First time I saw this gun, I thought, wow, they're really trying to copy the Anesti Water Supernova with the design, but um, yeah, it's definitely no Pininfarina design because honestly, the Supernova still has to take the cake as far as the best looking spray gun ever made. But hey, at the end of the day, it's all about how they spray. Really, you know, take looks aside, it's it's all about how they spray. And this job here was actually the very first job I sprayed with this gun. Now, I obviously have sprayed a, uh, more than one job with this by now, so I wouldn't just go and jump into a, a review after using a gun once. I've used it on every single job for base and clear for over a week, so I've had enough time to use it to know my feelings on the gun. And they actually sell this gun here as a base coat gun, so I thought it a little bit surprising. Like, I've, I've never really paid too much attention to what paint companies say about this gun's, you know, meant to be used for base coat or clear coat. And as you'll see later in this video, I'm actually going to use this gun for clear coat, and it performs absolutely amazingly. Now, settings I'm using on base coat here is full fan, full fluid and one and a half bar pressure for most of the coats of base coat but then on the last coat of base coat I find with solvent spraying solvents anyway it can help to drop the pressure down on your very last coat just to get that metallic to lay down really nicely so I go right down to say one bar on my last coat but honestly it probably didn't really need it spraying it with this gum because it is just an absolute beast and it's just a dream it's something I don't know I, I, I just feel like I could tell anyone on the planet to get this gun, spray silver through it, and you would not have an issue at all. It just seems to lay the silvers and the, the coarse metallics, the fine metallics, the, the colors that could possibly go mottly um, with an average spray gun. Uh, and, you know, even with a good spray gun in the wrong hands, or if you're not careful, you know, sometimes you can be caught out. But this gun here just seems to lay the metallics down just just about shut your eyes and spray type thing, really. Yeah, it's funny, I was only thinking about what Devilbus are gonna do with their next gun a few months ago. Well, I, I've actually given it a bit of thought over the years, like over recent years, I've thought, what are they gonna do? What are they gonna release? And do we need it? You know, that's one side of it. Like, I've got I've got one side of it is excitement to, to see what they were gonna come out with. And then the other side of it was, well, I don't know, short of the paints changing, I, I didn't feel that we need it because I, I just felt like they'd kind of perfected the spray gun already in many ways, you know. Um, I still always find myself recommending a Devilbus to lots of people because they seem to tick lots of the boxes. They're good build quality. 
reasonable prices and easy to use, like ease of use and, you know, and that doesn't mean that you, you know, you have to be an amateur to use one because in the right hands, you can get absolutely top quality finishes. I find that, say, Sardas and Iwatas can be a little bit harder to find their sweet spot with, you know what I mean? So, like, you, especially that Iwata of mine, like, I love that gun, don't get me wrong, and I've been loving the Iwata Supernova Lotus Edition um, I've been loving that for clear coat, but it, it takes a little bit of time to actually dial that thing in and that I know that that has turned a lot of people off that spray gun But once I finally found the sweet spot on that supernova It's a total beast whereas you won't have to stuff around for so long with your developers to find that sweet spot You can just run these things on full fan. You can run them on full fluid adjust your pressure and off you go they're gonna spray well and yeah just very simple so as you can see there it's just laid that base coat down just flawlessly absolutely there's no blend visible there i mean the color match does help you know like i did color match this color and that's um one pretty important thing when it does come to blending you can't blend black into white it doesn't matter how good you are at blending but if you get that color say 90 plus percent then it's going to blend nice and easily but you can definitely see that there's no mottling or anything like that one thing that i would just like to mention before i forget is that if you're a developer sprayer and you're currently using a 1.3 mil fluid tip you will now want to go for a 1.2 and if you're currently using a 1.2, you'll want to go for a 1.1. So the tips available for this are 1.2, 1.1, and 1.3. So go one lower than you previously would have gone with your standard developers. So your GTI Pros and your GTI Pro Lights go, go one step down with the fluid tip. So as you can see, obviously I'm using the same gun for clear coat and it's an absolute beast for clear coat too, which is why I was saying it's weird that they just sell this one as a base gun and then I think they're gonna be releasing a separate gun in a month or two maybe, that's what I hear. And then that's gonna be the clear one. I mean, this is totally speculation, but I wouldn't be surprised if they called it the DV2. I, I don't know, I could be completely wrong. Um, but yeah, that could be coming in the future. So as a, uh, I think I mentioned at the start, no, maybe I didn't, but yeah, there's two air caps available. So you've got the HVLP and the HVLP Plus. The one that I've got here is the HVLP Plus, and that's the one I would be recommending to most people. Now, would I say this gun is a must own? You know, like if, if you've got say three or four pro lights already, you're pretty happy with what you're doing, you know, is it gonna be an absolute game changer? Well, probably not, you know, you, what you've got, if, if what you've got is working for you, the guns are still uh, completely functional, you probably don't have to panic and rush out and get one of these, but if you're a spray gunning enthusiast like me and you just love spray guns and you like always having the latest of the latest, sure, get one. Otherwise, just wait until you need a new gun and they'll be there for you, you know what I mean? So, yeah, they're a great gun, but I, I wouldn't say it's like, you know, something that everyone absolutely needs in the trade. Does it save a great deal more paint than uh, your GTI Pros or Pro Lights? No, not really. I've found that just about all guns on the market at the moment are in the right hands. They're pretty competitive. Um, you know, you, you might be talking absolute minimal amounts, and I would probably say the same thing with even going HVLP compared to HVLP+. Plus. You're probably talking minimal paint savings, if anything. So the clear coat I'm using on this job here is the Quartz Liquid Glass, and I've got that running at 5% reducer, and yeah, I've just about nailed the use of this clear coat. Go 5%, and it absolutely, oh, it just totally glasses all these jobs up. It comes out with an amazing depth of gloss and gloss retention. It's got a nice amount of body to it. So um, yeah, my, my clear coat jobs have actually been coming out a lot cleaner as well because it's got a bit more fill because it does have that body to it. Um, so yeah, really happy with this clear still. And the gun itself I've found runs uh, with clear coat better at lower pressures. Um, so I would usually spray it two bar with most of the guns that I use these days. However, I've found this gun here, actually it wants to spray more the 1.9 bar. But then I actually went back um, last week and sprayed some of the thinner clear coats, which is like the Standock Standard Clear. And I tried spraying it at 1.9, but it was actually over-atomizing because it's that little bit thinner. 
and I found I had to turn the pressure right down. I ended up having to go right down to like 1.6 or 1.7 bar to actually get it to atomize nicely. So yeah, if you are to get one of these and you want to use it with clear coats, if you've got like a higher solids clear, a higher, you know, higher um, thickness material in layman's terms, then you might want to be a bit higher with your pressure and yeah, your thinner materials, just lower that pressure down a bit so it's not over atomizing and then um, yeah, just creating too much overspray and just not even getting enough material on the panel. But yeah, same thing with your base coats. You might might find if you're using waterborne paints that are a little bit thicker. I know when I was using Chromax Pro, which is the same as Spees Hecker Water and Stando Blue, I was I found like the sweet spot was around two bar. That was because um, you really need to like draw that liquid out of the spray gun. Um, so you need that higher pressure to actually draw it out at a nice speed. Whereas uh, the solvent uh, the solvent based uh, base coats which I'm using now, you thin that down to a two to one ratio. So it ends uh, ends up being a little bit thinner. So I've found that, yeah, the lower pressures actually work a bit better. So yeah, as I say, you might find if you're spraying uh, waterborne base coats with it, you might need to go up to 1.9 bar or something like that around there. But yeah, there you go. That's this job. This was the very first time I ever used this spray gun and I was blown away with it. I was really impressed with it. Now, one thing I would like to make a quick mention to is if you would like to see more on this spray gun, the best way to see it is go and subscribe to my raw channel. It was an idea I had a few years ago for another YouTube channel of uploading raw videos, so unedited videos. And what I've been doing lately is actually live commentary. So um, as I've been using the gun, I've been taking you guys through with the full live commentary and telling you about uh, pressure settings and all of that. So yeah, there's going to be lots more videos using this Devilbus DV1 on that RAW channel. There's a link at the end of this video and there's always a link to that channel in the description of my videos. I've been quite active over there. I've been putting a video up every second day or yeah, every day or two on that channel. So yeah, lots of uh, spray painting videos over there if you're interested in seeing more. If not, there'll always still be one video on my main channel every week. So there you go, absolute glass gloss out of the Devilbus DV-1. Don't go and panic and think it's only a base coat gun because as you can see there, it is more than capable of spraying clear coats as well. I think it's growing on me. As I'm sitting back here looking at this video, I think the gun is actually growing on me. Um, at first, I don't think I liked the design of it. It just felt like they were trying to copy the Supernova a little bit, but... It's growing on me. And here is a bit of a look at some of the air caps as a bit of a comparison. So you've got the Devilbus DV-1B HVLP Plus, then you've got the HV-25 there, and then the TE-20. Visually, all of them look really similar, but they do all spray fairly different. So it's um, yeah, it just goes to show that minute differences in the air cap do actually make big differences to how they spray. So I hope you all enjoyed watching this video. Hope I didn't leave out any important bits of information. The only thing I probably didn't touch on was the digital gauge. And look, the digital gauge is fine, but it's not a must have, you know. Nothing wrong with those $30 a and cheater valves. So if you wanna save yourself probably a few hundred dollars, we'll then go for them. But apart from that, hope you guys did enjoy watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Till then, get out there and paint some shit. Gunman out.